With me, I have the CEO for Crunchfish, uh, Joachim Samuelsson. Uh, during this interview, we will focus on uh, digital cash. Yes. So, Joachim, let's start with uh, you explaining what is digital cash. I think it's the future of payments. It's that big. Uh, digital cash, what it is, it's, uh, it's sort of a hybrid between what everybody knows as digital payments of today. It's typically an online activity. You have to be online, the money is in the bank, and uh, you transfer that to another account. That's sort of digital payments. Cash payments, on the other hand, uh, is offline. You, uh, you take out money by an ATM, you pay, and that's the, that's the step really, that now it's you're in agreement that you have uh, paid for something and you can leave with goods and services. And then uh, the merchant then, or someone has it, can always go to the bank and deposit it. So it, it is a, a cash, the cash process is like a one, two, three. You withdraw money, you pay, and you deposit. That is what we have done with digital cash. We've broken it up into three steps. You reserve money, so you have some money to you. You pay in a separate step. And then the third step is the settlement. And settlement is what also happens in digital payments today. Uh, it's typically two steps in digital payments. It's pay, that's the step where I come into a shop and you know who are the receiver of that payment that you will be paid. You necessarily doesn't have to have received the money yet. That happens in the settlement step. Uh, but you know, you can trust. You, you let the customer go with goods and services uh, and then settlement happens later. Typically it's, it's divided into two when it comes to card payments. It's just a pre-authorization that comes in the card terminal. Money hasn't been moved, it will happen later. Swish on the other hand, here in Sweden, that will be an instant payment. They have actually combined the two steps. Both payment and the settlement happens instantaneously and then uh, you know, uh, money, you know, payment and settlement has been done and then it's over. But what we've done with digital cash is to always break it up into three steps. You reserve money, you pay, settlement comes later. That's, that's what digital cash is all about. And you, Crunch has recently announced an expansion from a digital cash product to a digital cash platform. Uh, could you please elaborate on this change? What, what does that mean? Yeah, um, well, digital cash product uh, that we came with, uh, we, we applied for a patent for it, uh, that was sort of two years ago, um, because we, we, we sort of thought, mostly because of coming from India, understanding their problems of really just having internet connectivity in the major cities and maybe 50 kilometers outside, the rest of the country is only telecom connectivity. So you can, you can make calls and you can, uh, you can send SMS, but no data. So we, we were thinking that, all right, so why on earth have we made ourselves dependent on the net? Couldn't we pay, just like cash, cash goes digital we were talking about, and that is digital cash offline, meaning that we are independent from the net. That is, was a product that we developed and uh, we have uh, quite a few patents. We got, uh, well, we, we have, uh, patent applications. We got a patent for it uh, just uh, two months ago. And um, that was the focus for 2021. Um, what we realized when we, uh, it was actually when we got the patent that we could actually do this online as well. Because as I said, digital payments is an online thing. People, that, that's all the banks and all the payment services is always online, online, online. And we were the odd guys who had done something offline, independent from the net. So we, we thought, okay, why don't we uh, develop digital cash the same way, three steps, reserve, pay and settle, but originating the payment online instead. That is important because what is actually most often going wrong in digital payments is that the banks with their what's called a core banking system, that is typically quite old systems, uh, archaic systems, and they are not really designed for the volumes that is now going to happen in the society. So that goes down. So when you read about in the paper here in Sweden that Swish has gone down, it's, I would say it's very seldom Swish. It is the banks. So if one of our major banks say, uh, well, I take one, you know, not to point to them, but uh, if Swedbank goes down, 
So any, anyone who has a Swedbank, they, they are a customer of Swedbank, they can't pay with uh, Swish and they can't receive money either. So if, if that's one of the major banks going down, Swish is actually in the entire country sort of out. Swedbank could also have a big other problem is that because they are probably the biggest acquirer on card payments. So that means that you can't probably pay at Ica because I think they're using uh, Swedbank Pay and you in many other grocery stores. And it's a big, that's panic. That's when, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's on Aftonbladet that uh, we have a problem. So what's offline then? It's the bank. And with digital cash online, we are able to isolate away the bank core banking, the, the banking core banking system, the ba core banking system, yeah. So we, digital cash online allows you to pay even if the core banking system is down. So digital cash online isolates core banking system. That could be down. Payment services still works. Digital cash offline helps you that even if you don't have connectivity, it works anyway. But it's the same principle. One, two, three. Reserve, pay, settle. Same thing whether it's online or offline. And, and we, this is what we came up with. Uh, and uh, I, I'm happy that we, we have actually made a complete turnaround in the company from a digital cash offline offer, one product, to a whole architecture which spans from the core banking to digital cash online. From there, you can reserve out money to digital cash offline on a mobile phone. And we've added also uh, a, a third layer, which is... Um, sort of digital cash on non-mobile devices like cards or wear wearables. And, and we have patented even that you can even do that transaction in a complete offline mode, which is a sort of a, we have at least a patent pending on that. So uh, we've gone from a product to a whole sort of architecture in three layers here. Online, digital cash online, digital cash offline on the mobile phone, and then to basically digital cash on smart chips. So it's a huge shift what we've done. And that's, I guess, why we're sitting here talking, just for pe making people understand that something has happened. But as you mentioned, that with di your digital cash online, yes. you will still be able to pay, even though the bank sort of is down, so yeah. to speak. Uh, how will the funds end up in my sort of digital cash online account? Are they, uh, do, they um, do I send them from my bank account from the beginning, so to speak? And then if something happens to the, the connectivity with the bank, I still ha have my digital cash online funds, so to speak. Do you see my question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a good question. Now, the, the way we see that digital cash online will be set up, it will be actually happening at the bank. I, I think that would be the, the, at the majority of cases, it will be the bank itself that will set up digital cash online as a, as on, a, on a sort of separate server from the core banking system. So you have your transactional account on the core banking system and you, the bank would provide a separate server where you have an account as well. That's your digital cash online account. That means that we have created redundancy. So even if the core banking uh, system is down, you could then use the digital cash online. In terms of the balance here, I think what will happen is that they will actually mirror out your entire transactional account on to the digital cash uh, online account. You as a user won't even see this. The digital cash online will be a completely a banking issue, creating stability for them, robustness, uh, everything that the financial regulators of Sweden are asking the banks to do. You need to stabilize this because we can't have it that uh, the whole country is, is in havoc. Digital cash online is that solution. Digital cash offline, that's for users who are just like if you get a MasterCard or Visa, that, that, that you know, a, a card is always offline. We are providing that sort of MasterCard and Visa function on a mobile phone. That, that's the offline thing. But the online is, is for the banks to get uh, better robustness, to load balance. Because the cool thing is that then, as I said, all this transaction volume happening, core banking is not really designed to handle it but they could do it much more easily with the digital cash online, which can be built on a server, more modern technology and faster switching really there. So we, we're helping the banks. And, and why I say load balancing is that the banks are able to decide when is that third step settlement? When is that going to happen? They can do it immediately. They could, 
but they can also decide, well, we do it uh, when we have spare capacity. And for banks, that means a, a lot of things. They don't have to design their core banking for peak demand anymore. Because otherwise, peak demand will be in that, okay, Friday, uh, when a lot of people are out shopping, they have to design sort of for peak demand. Now they, they, they could actually then, you know, uh, design it for something much less uh, in terms of uh, capacity and still have that robustness. Th that will be meaning a lot for the banks uh, having it that way. And uh, where are the banks? Uh in the process of accepting like the dig digital cash online uh, are you in uh, are there like project stages or could you please elaborate yeah. on, on well, the communication the, this, with the banks that yeah, you we, have? we we came with digital cash offline uh, the product was ready in july last year six months ago uh, and the, the, everybody think it's an interesting concept particularly in india i would say uh, where as i said they only have data connectivity in the major cities uh, the Central Bank of India has just announced a new regulatory framework of how offline payments should work. That, that means that you are offline as a user. Uh, and, and we are in discussion in India for that. Online is, is, is quite a new thing. You know, we, we, uh, we announced that... Uh, yeah, I, I had it actually in the Q3 report, came mid-November. So we, it's not like we have gone to the entire world with this. But we have talked with some and everybody has embraced it fully. Uh, we are talking to some of the biggest banks in the world about this in terms of transaction volumes and they love the concept. Are there any sp specific parts of the concept that they are um, extra excited about? Load balancing. Uh, load balancing on the core banking system because when they, they, they have some of the banks we are talking to uh, probably have in terms of transaction volume in India they, they are at par maybe the, with the entire American market. All banks, the entire market in the US, that's how many transactions some of the banks in India are switching. If you combine every bank, all their transactions digitally, that's what we're looking for in India. They are so far ahead. They need load balancing because otherwise their core banking systems are on their knees to cope with the exploding volumes that they see on digital payments. And you mentioned there that there are a lot of digital payments in India. Uh, how has that uh, developed during the years? Well, it's just completely exploded. You know, um, in India they have something called UPI, if we talk about the equivalent of SWISH, Unified Payment Interface. What, what the banks did, it's sort of, just like SWISH is owned by sort of our, our banks here. They have they've developed one service, everybody has it here. In India, everybody's using UPI, but what they've done instead is that they have allowed third parties to develop using the UPI interface many, many apps. So in their market, they have Google Pay, they have Amazon Pay, they have, um, you know, it's probably a hundred different flavors. There are, there are a few which are the dominant one. Google Pay, I think they have 30% of the market. Phone P, which is sort of the Indian Amazon, they're, they're owned by the... Um, yeah, the, the, sort of the e-commerce uh, players in, in India, they have 45. So these two are 80%. Uh, and then there is uh, probably 100 other apps, but they're all using the same. And, but that service came into market in November 2016, and it's just exploded. Uh, now they are, they're doing, I think they are, they're getting close now to 5 uh, billion transactions per month. Swish hasn't done 5 billion since start in 2012. They're doing it monthly. And if we compare that to like US or China, where I assume there's a lot of digital transactions in China, uh, but how do that amount China, compare China to them? used to be the leader. China used to be the leader. Uh, I, I remember when I, uh, and I started looking at this, uh, China was ahead, you know, they have, it's, it's sort of an, um, they have two players. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's WeChat, owned by Tencent, and then, then there is sort of Alipay. China is actually at the, at the Olympics now. It's going to introduce CBDC, central bank digital currency. When, when the Olympics are going to be now in, in China, they, they're going to show the world that, look how far ahead we are. So CBDC will come into China quite soon as well. It will be a sort of like a third option here. But it is quite only a few players. India, on the other hand, as I said, they have just developed a, an open standard and they have pouring in of money and investments and and competence and so they, they are they're, they're developed now india is twice china size 
they are 15 times US size. So India is by far the leader in uh, digital payments. Crunchfish has also announced an additional layer of wearables and smart cards as part of the digital cash platform. Uh, when is that coming to market and what's the purpose with these new devices, so to speak? Yeah, uh, it's coming 2022. Um, we have, we, we, we are, we have a very small development team, but extremely competent. We have one guy who's worked years uh, actually with that technology that you, 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 do, you sort of write Java applets uh, running on those sort of smart chips. He's done that and he knows what to do. And, and we actually, all, already a year ago, we applied for a patent on how you can interact from a mobile phone where you have digital cash offline. So you have some money here. You have a balance here sitting on digital cash offline and you come with say a, a smart card. Then you could to your daughter who has a wristband with a smart card, uh, a smart chip. You could say, okay, 100. You, you put that into your Swish app. Beep. She blips her wristband. Then we deduct that from the mobile phone and it's on her wristband. She goes to a shop, then it's sort of the reverse. Then the shop owner, he, he enters into an app. It would be the equivalent of sort of a car terminal. He says, okay, that was for your, your ice cream. It was 15 krona. And then she says, beep. And then we take 15 krona from her, her sort of wristband. And, and that goes to the um, digital cash offline of that merchant. So we, we are completing sort of a circle here. And, and wh why is that important? Because particularly for CBDC, central bank digital currency, who is supposed to be something that everybody should be able to use. Everybody uses cash today, but it's, cash is sort of going away. And you know, in Sweden, it's, it's many establishments don't even accept cash anymore. We need something for elderly, for small children, and this is the solution. And the good thing for us, having done it also in a complete offline mode, is that then this can address the entire Indian market everywhere in India, not just the, the cities where they might have internet connectivity. This works everywhere. So that layer will be uh, important for CBDC in countries like Sweden, where we need to have something for elderly. My, my dad, you know, he, he has switched on his phone, but I always switch myself if I buy something for him. He can't do it. He, he, he doesn't know how to do it. However, if, if I could just give him on a wristband, instead of he goes to an ATM, he can have some money there. That would be easy for him, or on a card. He could use that, no problem. But uh, we need to cater for uh, a population that uh, maybe is, is not able to use just a, a smartphone. Uh, that's what we can do here. And then having it to work also offline, as we, we know India has huge need for, would be fantastic. Uh and if you look at your Crunchfish IP portfolio, uh, could you please explain, if we focus on the area of digital payments, could you please elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, we, you know, this hierarchy we have, if you think of it as, uh, we have the core banking, uh, and then closer to the core banking will be that digital cash online. So we have patented that. We have patented uh, digital cash online if we are using a, uh, a payment which is a signed payment somewhere else. This is, um, if I, well, let, let, me, let me back up a little bit. Uh, digital cash offline, what we created was a way to sign out, digitally sign a transaction with cryptographic keys. So when you receive it, as long as you have a certificate, a publicly available certificate, you could trust that this is a legit payment. We have got a patent for that. And, 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 and the good thing here is that we have a bit of an asymmetry because it's only the payer who needs to have that secure environment. The other one, does, could, could, that could be verified anywhere. It could be, you can have that on Facebook. Uh, you, we can send to a Facebook account. We don't have to send from a wallet to another wallet. That's a good thing. And we, we have a patent for that. That's a digital cash offline. We have that also applied a patent if that happens online as well. And then we have the digital cash offline. We can have that in combination with the wearables, the cars, as I said, even in offline mode. We have it applied specifically for digital cash offline, applied to 
EMV, this is Euro, Europay, uh, Eurocard, Mastercard and uh, Visa on the card rails. Uh, and then we have, uh, yeah, we have, we, uh, there is currently seven uh, innovations in this area, whereas one is granted, which is the digital cash offline piece. Uh, so we, 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 have, we have a fantastic portfolio where going all the way from the online to the offline to the interaction with the very walls and cars as well. So I, I think we second to none in digital payments. That's why I think we, we are sitting with the future of payments. Could you please um, clarify a bit regarding the business model and like the, the go-to-market strategy for digital cash? What's the next step? Well, the, the business model will be if if we start with digital cash online, uh, I, I very much believe that this will be a transactional type of business model. We, we will get a little bit of piece of the pie for every single transaction that is sort of switched. And, and what's nice is that I know that the banks we're talking to, they are considering putting all payment rails onto our digital cash online. Cards, crypto, instant, um, CBDC when it comes, everything. And we will get a piece of that. So we, we, we have a, we're probably going to sign them up for a, a multi-year contract. We, we might have that, that buys you this money transactions. Uh, but then any additional um, transactions that you do, we get a little piece of that. That's digital cash online. Very similar business model as, as banks are uh, you know, used to when it comes to anyone selling, say, uh, a, a switch, uh, who is the routing mechanism. They, they, they typically do it that way. We will do the same. Digital cash offline. That's quite similar to what the banks are used to as you go to, you as a customer goes to the bank and says, I want a MasterCard. And they, they offer a MasterCard service. Then they charge you for you having that ability to be able to pay. So you have a yearly fee for that MasterCard. I think it will be the same. There will be like a subscription fee for digital cash offline. And banks will make money of that. We will make money of that. And you will... If you want to have the ability to pay offline without any network connectivity, you will pay for that. And then the third layer, same thing. That's just that it comes a little bit of hardware as well. We have a smart chip there, or we can put it in various sort of form factors on a wristband, on a key ring, on a, on a card. This can even run together with Visa. Visa has their Visa function, and they can have digital cash as a dual, a SEP or secondary uh, mechanism on the same card. The same smart chip that the Visa has on their card could both run a Visa payment, gives you access to entire EMV network of the world, all card terminals, but digital cash as well, which gives you access maybe to all apps. So, uh, and, and then, yeah, we, that would be a special charge for that as well, just like you, you charge for that Visa card. So I, I think the business model is quite clear how, how, how that will come out in the market. And uh... Do we have a timeline for these projects when they are sort of completed or? We, we are in, in late stage discussions with some of the major banks in the world, as I have said. And, and, and that's, that has all accelerated now with Digital Cash Online. They see the benefit. They need to be offloaded, as I said, from their core banking system. We provide that. That's the step one. It, the rollout will always be, let's start with Digital Cash Online. When you have that and, and, and to set it up, yeah, I'm guessing it will take a month. Yeah, not more. Then they could offer their user base digital cash offline. Both of these products, we have announced it, it's ready. Online is ready, offline is ready. Just go for it. Then when they have digital cash offline, then yeah, whilst they are you know, rolling that out, we're going to develop then digital cash on non-mobile devices, these cards and variables, and then, then they can go for the, that's the third, third step as well. So it will be one, two, three as well. Online, offline on, in, offline on mobiles, smart, smartphones that is, and then as a third rollout step, it will be on all these sort of different form factors that you are, you know, uh, in a passive device, if you think of it, uh, because a card has, you know, has no, it's a passive device. The mobile is, it can also be offline there, but it's an active device. We talked a lot about digital cash, but you also have a, a part called gesture interaction. How do you manage these two businesses uh, 
I mean, the industries are quite dynamic. Uh, it's digital payments and computer vision, quite large industries, so to yes. speak. How do you manage them together? Well, I don't know if we manage them that much together. I have two excellent CEOs for each business area. Uh, Joachim Niedermark, uh, who has been with Crunchbase as long as I have, and has always been focused on the gesture interaction side. He is the CEO of that part. He has uh, his own development team. Uh, there are about, what are they, six, seven people there in that team. Then we have Patrick Lindeberg, who is the uh, CEO of Digital Cash. He has about the same amount of people in terms of development there. And um, we are we pride ourselves simply to be extremely agile and adaptable. We, 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 we are not set in that this is the way it has to be because that's what our technology will do. We always start thinking about what is best for the solution itself, what is best for the people uh, on that side. And then the technology shouldn't be the restriction, it should be the enabler. And, and in both those areas, it just happens to be that we are in its fifth generation in both areas. And, and what really happened last year, in both product areas, we had Exoskeleton as a product at the beginning of uh, 2021. Now it's a platform. We can do with so many different sort of sensors. We can we have it also for the full body. Or we can train it uh, uh, if, if you train for a glasses where you have hands here or if you turn it that you have a public screen and the hands is the camera is pointing towards you. Whatever. We, we can throw anything on our way of training uh, a computer, machine learning. We are just, uh, it's, it's just amazing how, what we can do in, on that side. But likewise for digital cash, we, we started the year with digital cash offline as a product. And all of a sudden we have a platform. And the platform still has that extremely important piece, digital cash offline on a mobile, but we have just expanded it into, as you said, this layer of uh, with smart chips and we added online. And we have, we have other ideas as well of how we actually could add to this strong sort of platform. Because a platform is versatile, we can take it in any direction. A product is more of sort of niche, solving one thing. A platform is just, um, it just creates so much more flexibility. And that's the strength of us. That's, that's why we, we have started with this, uh, starting talking about Darwin and survival of the fittest. Because, because it's, all, it's all about that, Darwin said that it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the ones most responsive to change, the most adaptable. That's the winners. I think we are that winner. I know Crunchfish recently started with a, a webinar series. Yes, on that webinars. same theme. Yeah. Survival of the fittest. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's the purpose of, of these webinars? Um, we, we really feel that we have such a story to tell. So there is one purpose is just to tell the world what we have. And, and uh, it, it's quite fun. We, we just launched it uh, at New Year's. Uh, it's been just, uh, what is it now, 10 days into the new year. Uh, and uh, we have almost now 200 people signed up. Half on it is from India, which I really like. Uh, and, and so we start always with an information session. We give a presentation, five, 10 minutes. Um, that's it. Then there is Q&A live. Uh, and uh, then we have created a co-creation session where we, we ask the audience, okay, can we do this better? Is there any idea you have? Don't just ask us questions about, so you should understand, but I'm sure some of them would have ideas. Why don't you do it this way? We, we are that curious kind of people. We have that as our values is, you know, it, it's all about, we are curious, we are creative and we are caring. And I think the webinar series is really a manifestation of all that. We are curious, we are creative, we learn from things, and we are um, we're very caring of being extremely open. I, 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 I don't know any public company who goes live every Friday at eight o'clock. Everybody welcome. Uh, I, I think it's gonna be quite unique. And uh, we've had a premiere on the, um, on the 7th. Uh, on the 14th of January now it will be uh, it will be um, gesture interaction back to digital cash, and then it will be more of a broader crunchfish focus. And, and that will be the cycle. So digital cash, gesture, digital cash, crunchfish. These four always. And uh, we, have, we haven't set any, any sort of, how long will we run it for? Well, so far so good. We just had one, but uh, we have already come up with 48, uh, 48 themes. So uh, we, for sure, we, we could if we want to, 
run it for the entire 2022. If people like it, and, and, and I think they do. I think people like to be engaged. Uh, they like to learn. And uh, it, it's, it's not extra work for us because we, we go into these presentations we do. This is what we do for our introductory customer meetings as well. Uh, our bankers that we go and see, for instance, if we talk with digital cash, they, don't, they know little about crunches at that point, but they know their stuff. So we, we have to explain it a little bit from where we're coming from. Our investment community, who are very welcome as well, they know a little bit more about what we do, but they don't know much about banking. So I think the level of presentation could work for both because they are both handicapped in their own, own ways. So it, 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 it worked quite fine. Uh, it's, um, yeah, I, I think it was a success, the, uh, the first webinar we did. And um, yeah, looking forward to the second one now on Friday. Uh, I would like to round off this interview with uh, uh, one last question, and that is, could you give us like the elevator pitch of digital cash and digital cash platform? Wow. Um, yeah, well, well, the short answer is that I truly believe that digital cash is the future of payments, regardless of the form factor. You can pay with a mobile, you can sit at home paying at the web, you can use a car, you can use a wearable. Regardless, digital cash is the way to go. Regardless also of payment rail, you can be on crypto, you can be on instant payment, you can be on cards, you can be on CBDC. And regardless if you're online or offline, we have developed a complete unique things which will take the world with storm. We will start in India who, where we have customers who probably are switching more transactions than the entire United States market combined. That's where we will start. When we hit that market with what we have now, uh, people will start realizing that we've, uh, these guys have done something. Great, thank you Joachim for this interview. Thank you very much.